Uh, it was really mainly for the AB. Um, generally, it, just that little discount. Generally, like you'll need the discount will affect when you need to get a Venom Brood fast when you get rushed by a vehicle. So that was mainly the reason why uh, you would get the cost. That's why the, there was like a cost reduction to it. But it, it, I honestly think it doesn't really affect the the synergy with the with the syn that it has with the range synapse at the moment. So like if they're gonna get it for s for uh, range synapse, they're just gonna get it anyways, regardless of the little power discount. Yeah, I mean it's not real. It's not gonna impede too much, but you know if generally if you're doing like a whole range thing and you're just going with the flow of the thing, it's still gonna come out around the same time. But it's the the where it's gonna pay the biggest difference is when you know you're not in that current flow and the guy is already beating you. The guy just pops out like three, two blood crushers, just keeps building them, and you know it's. It, it makes it pretty hard to get to deal with them at the current cost. All right, you so just kind of give, giving a little bit of that snap anti-vehicle a little bit more, regardless of if the synergy affects it. Yeah, because, okay. I mean, like, if you get two, right, you know, synergy doesn't really stack. Yeah, anything, yeah. So it's not really a big deal. All right, I buy that. And then uh, the next one here, and this was right in line with the Land Raider one, again, was that the Swarm Lord uh, got a pretty significant hit point reduction. Uh, it was like 300 hit points or something to that effect. Um, <coughs> was there a certain matchup or anything like that that you saw it over that was being overpowered in? Again, this is one that people on the forums kind of thought seemed like it was pretty balanced anyways and were kind of just surprised. I don't think anyone was upset by it, but uh, what was the motivation behind that? Well, we, we looked at the unit quite a bit when we were playing it internally, and, you know, we came to the conclusion that the Swarm Lord, you know, has a lot of health and kills a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> to and, use some um, tactical terms there, yes. And, you know, really, you know, compared compared to our Carnifex, it just, we, we felt that, you know, it did a lot more than a Carnifex. I know, I'm not going to point out any names or anything, but, like, I've read on the forums that, you know, Oh yeah, people always want to pick a Carnifex over over a Swarm Lord, but you know I've 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 been in the ladder. People have seen me. I've played a lot of games. I have a pretty decent rating. And, you know, there's a lot of times where I play Nids and I'm just like walk in the park with my two Termagons, Hormagons, la di da di da. You know, have maybe have a Ravner squad somewhere, and I'm just like capping points and stuff. And you know, the guy has a big army of like uh, Chaos. A uh, bunch of chaos base marines, you know, core marines or like tax ASMs, you know, just a big army. And then, you know, I get the tier three, whip out my swarm lord, and you know, then I transition into killing all this shit and winning the game. Transition so, into <laughs> destroying his army, yes. <laughs> and, you know, like it's it's kind of ridiculous. Like there are times where where they're attacking me with attacking my swarm lord with everything everything I have, and I'm just you know just sitting there and taking it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, we just we just felt that you know it needed it needed a health nerf. I mean, it still does a lot of damage. Does a lot of damage, this. but at least maybe it's it's a bit killable now if you put an entire army onto it. All yeah, right, I mean, people are yep. forgetting, right? It's it still has like his two abilities, his like health draining ability, which you know regen gives him yeah. a lot of health really fast. So I mean, I don't, I think, I think that just health reduction was necessary. And I mean, if you don't like it, you can they can they can blame Tasker. Right sizing, swarm lord. Right sizing, and if you don't like it, you can blame Tasker. <laughs> All right, I will. I will uh, go ahead. I'll include his email below in the description of this video. Just <laughs> kidding. All right, so moving on to the orcs here. Uh, the next one, in fact, really, really the only uh, real orc question out there. Um, again, had to go with the fact that the tank buster had its power completely removed. I can assume uh, that this was just kind of in parallel to the. Um, the Venom Brood, uh, just kind of making the Tank Buster kind of a little easier to pick up at Tier 2. Uh, but the question was more along the lines of, so how do you view the Tank Buster versus the Beamy Duff Gun upgrade? And would you like to see more of one or the other or what? Because now it seems like uh, the Tank Busters are probably easier to get or something to that effect. Where, where's your opinion on that? Well, I mean, um, it really it's all situational. Because I mean, there there will be certain builds where you actually build Ludas in in <laughs> you build Ludas in tier one, mm -hmm. and um, you know you transition you transition into tier two, and they have a vehicle out where you only spend like I don't know seventy five rec to upgrade into a BB beamy death gun or something, and then you know you have it right there just for seventy five rec, right? You don't have to build a a tank buster squad, but yeah, again, um, you know you want to pick a tank buster squad if you're you know under pressure with a, a fast vehicle rush against you, right? You want to get that out quickly. So, you know, it's it's all situational, really. I it, I don't think people, people gotcha. will, like, pick anything differently, you know? 
yeah, it makes pretty much it makes makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, that one, I, I think, I didn't have too many problems with there. Um, all right, let's move on to chaos. So there were a lot of little individual questions about orc that were out there, but again, I was tallying them up, and if, if th there were a couple good ones, but it was only like one question, so I just I just moved on here because we're trying to get to all of the community's most popular questions here. So uh, moving on to chaos. Um, Let's take a look at what we see here. The only one, and again, this was just kind of, I don't think there were too many objections here, but the only real question out there uh, had to do with the uh, the change that was made to the Plague Champion's icon of Nurgle. So the range of the decay on that was increased from 12 to 22. Um, uh, again, not too many people picked up on this, but uh, enough experts kind of raised an eyebrow at that and said, hmm, I think that could make this very effective in certain matchups. What was your opinion on that, and why did why, where'd you go from, uh, <laughs> you know, where did that change come from? Um, well... As you know, I, I do play the ladder. I play I play random. And I play every every single race, every mm -hmm. single hero, and you know I, I do try like I'll try the different pieces of war gear. And and you know what really sparked an interest? I was looking through this, and you know Icon Nurgle is supposed to you know do damage over time. And I, I was I was testing it out just on my own computer, and I was looking at it, and you know you really gotta get really close before you before you can even you know feel the effect of that, even even. You know, if you're right engaged in melee with something, then they're going to feel it. But, I mean, like, if things are close to around it, then, you know, at at the current state of it, they wouldn't be affected over it. And, you know, I just felt like, you know, it could be a little bit bigger, you know. People, like, enemy infantry should be able to feel the effect because we all know how squishy the Plague Marine can be sometimes. So, uh yeah, that was really the reason. I I don't think it's going to be that big of a problem. Yeah, I, I think, just think I think it's, it's kind of yeah. It seems it seems more in fitting with the image of what that kind of an item should do, anyways, which is just like a big aura of decay, as opposed to like I have to be right up next to you and hugging you in order for you and the guy yeah. next to you to feel. Yeah, that kind I mean of thing. the the damage isn't isn't ridiculous at all. I mean, mm -hmm. I I don't really see that many people use the that war gear in general. So, you know, I I don't think it's going to be. I think it's going to be fine. All right, and now we will move on to the two biggest factions that had the, the most questions about them, the Imperial Guard and the Eldar. So uh, let's start off with the Imperial Guard here. And again, uh, we're going to be commenting a game after this interview. And uh, spoiler alert, it does involve Imperial Guard and Eldar. <laughs> but uh, the first one out there, uh, the Baneblade is easily the biggest and the baddest super unit in the game at the moment right now. Uh, and, and there have just been tons of games. That I've cast a bunch of them. They've been live casting them. They happen during tournaments where just the Baneblade comes out on the field and just annihilates everybody. Um, do you feel that it's big, uh, it's huge cost? I mean, obviously it has a huge cost and it has a huge build time and all that. Do you think that ought adequately offsets its game-winning abilities after it gets out on the field? Uh, or is, you know, is it balanced, basically, is the question a lot of people are wondering. Yeah, I mean, I... I I honestly think the Bane Blade is is fine. I mean, community can grill me for for, <laughs> for that too. But I mean, you know, it it has its weaknesses. I mean, I don't know if people know this, but you know, it can't cap points. <laughs> but <laughs> we, but have, you know, we have seen some big games lost where a Bane Blade was just stomping on killing everything, and they were just ninja capping around it. But sorry, continue, continue. But but yeah, you know, basically, you know, the thing has a min range, and um, I think when people use their abilities they can see that it does have a min range so basically any any melee unit with uh, power power weapons or can can kill it and you know bane blade can't fire its big guns at them so is that your officially recommended uh relic bane blade uh operational procedure here heavy melee close range swarming it yeah you know i've built a bunch of blood letters and jumped on it and just destroyed that thing in seconds and you know ogrens do the same thing to it as well uh gene stealers gene stealers work really well against it too so i mean oh gene steal another unit that i almost never see but that's nice okay all right that's kind of how i feel i, I kind of feel like if you allow it's, it's you know <laughs> it seems kind of it's it's kind of an unsatisfying answer but i think it's true is that like if you allow them to get a bane blade on the field then you've kind of already, and you don't have any way to counter it, you've kind of already lost yourself the game in most situations there. Or the player was already losing by the time it got on the battlefield. Um, okay, so here was, this was, I think, the number two most requested question. And it was, no, people didn't have a problem with it, people were just curious. Uh, and this is, of course, the Inquisitor. The Inquisitor received uh, quite a few buffs across the board. Uh, and a lot of people were just like, oh, that's odd. I, th I kind of thought she was fine the way she was. Um, did you feel she was underpowered? Uh, or did you feel, or were you giving people an incentive to play her more? Or what, what was it exactly? And feel free to walk us through any of those changes in particular. Uh, yeah, we just, we just felt like the Inquisitor was the weakest hero out of, out of the three bunch. 
Um, do you mean all heroes or just the uh, of just the uh, just guard? in the IG? Okay. IG, we felt that yeah, you know, we felt like she was the weakest thing, and you know, we just felt like her gun could do a little bit more damage, especially with that's why we uh, increased the damage with the Inferno pistol. Gotcha, and and the the hit point buff as well. Uh, was that just another keeping her keeping her in par with everybody else kind of thing? Uh, yeah, we felt we felt like uh, you know she felt a little squishy, and um, you know generally um, in in most games that I have played or most games I've seen her with, you know you really need to buy that uh, invulnerability shield to really kind of keep her in the battle. Mm -hmm. And so we felt that you know <clears throat> with this hit points, maybe people can invest in different war gear. And um, I'm not going to make you spill any numbers here, but did you feel like she was being underplayed amongst players? Like, were players just playing her less frequently than other heroes or anything like that? Uh, yeah, definitely. We did feel like she was the least played hero out of, out of all of them. Cool. Okay. Well, there you... Whoops, cool. Okay, well, there you have it. Sorry, I think I muted myself for a second there. Um, yeah, so there's your incentive to get out there and play with the Inquisitor, because she's going to be a little bit more of a beater in the next patch. Uh, the next one out there was the Katachin Devils. Uh, had all sorts of stuff. Now, we were talking earlier about how it seemed like some of the some of the uh, upgrades were kind of tweaked in just by a few energy costs, but it, it sort of tried to encourage people to use combinations or discourage combinations. The uh, Katachan Devils appeared to be the, the latter one there. Not only did we see them get a reduction in just kind of damage uh, from their shotguns, but also it seems like you were trying to get rid of the combination, the duo of uh, high explosive shot and old reliable. Was that just like a constantly overpowered thing that you saw early game? Was that, was that the motivation there? Uh, well, we didn't really want to eliminate that combination. We just wanted to give player, make players, you know, um, have a choice on which, uh, which ability they want to use first. If you look at the numbers, you know, they can use the second ability within like five, five or six seconds or so. But we just wanted to make players feel like they had to choose, like in which situ situation, um, in which situation that I'm in, which ability should I use uh, instead of before. It's just like a no-brainer. Oh, I can just use both. Whatever. One, two, bam, bam. Yeah. And right. you know, just with the with the damage reduction, we did feel like they did they do do a lot of damage um, with their shotguns. So we just wanted to tone that down a little bit. But overall, we feel that you know, uh, the late game uh, viability has improved just with the, the reduced upkeep that we gave them. Yeah, that's another good point there, too, that, that I didn't mention when I was reading over that. Um, do you think that the these changes will in any way encourage double Katachan play a little bit more? Because it seemed like one was all you needed to, to take care of business uh, previously. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it just opens up more variety uh, to, to to play style. I mean, like, before, you could go double Katachans, but, you know, that the upkeep penalty that you would feel later on would be enormous and you know it just hurt you too much later on cool well i agree with that uh the next one out there and this was another just kind of curious question people were just wondering uh the ogrens had a cost reduction was that simply to help the ig players get them out on the field a little bit earlier or were there other balance reasons you saw uh yeah definitely uh just because you know the ogrens are are like the only meaty uh unit uh, for the IG, they're the only real <laughs> dedicated melee unit as well, and so they really kind of need to stand in line to as like kind of a you know a meaty shield to deal with a lot of lot of stuff. And you know we just wanted thing wanted them to get them out faster, wanted IG players to get them out faster because you know before they did cost a little expensive considering you do only get uh, three units, three entities at the start, and you have to upgrade uh, to get the leader on them as well. Fair enough, fair enough. And here was another one that uh, didn't quite make the top five list, but it was close. Uh, a lot of people were just curious about the Stormtroopers, uh, specifically about the fact that uh, it sounds like uh, their recon kit was removed, and now they just they simply have Infiltrate by default. Um, people were curious uh, just about how that's actually going to play out. Did you envision them as being more of, because obviously they can still be anti-vehicle units, uh, as being kind of infiltrate, sneak around, take out vehicles, that sort of thing? Are you looking at changing their role at all in the metagame? Uh, yeah, definitely. It helps them get a little closer to the vehicles and, you know, being all stealthy and ninja -y and throwing their melted bombs. But, you know, the I don't think it's going to be too... They're not going to be too crazy. I mean, Stefan Haynes brought it up that uh, Stormtroopers with uh, infiltrate and melted bombs would be really crazy. But, uh, 